you let God give the increase. Let, you know, it might not come up right that moment. It might be on down the road. They'll start thinking about get, getting right with the Lord. And they don't know where, you know, it first come from. I, I remember so many preachers. R. W. Schellenbach. A lot of people ain't never heard of him. Some, but a lot of you have. Great faith preacher. Preached all mm -hmm. over the world. Preached. He would take his tent into the ghettos of the major cities. He wouldn't go to the very lush parks and the very beautiful place in the city. He'd go to a ghetto and set a great giant tent up and have a tent revival in ghettos. Amen. But he'd go around and preach. But he was telling the story about one day he was coming down the street, down the street, and there was this uh, minister. And he said he was a black minister. We said it ain't got nothing to do with anything. It's just what he said. Amen. Didn't matter who was preaching, black, white, whatever, as long as it's the word of God, that's, that's the way it is. But he said he's preaching on the corner. So there wasn't hardly nobody lifted, uh, standing around him or seemed like they wouldn't pay him no attention. They weren't listening to him. He said, but he's walking. So he just walked on by him. He said he didn't even stand there. He didn't let him know that he was listening. But he said he was listening. See, when you think they ain't listening, don't yeah. mean they ain't listening. Amen. You might feel like, man, they could care less about this. But somebody over there might be listening. That might be the mm -hmm. one that God's trying to get That's you to right. get to. And he said, I didn't even let him know that I was listening. I just went on by, went around the corner, went on down uh, just a few uh, feet around the corner. He couldn't see anything. He said, next thing I know, the Spirit of God hit me. He said, I wound up on my knees in a gutter, mm. praying, asking God Amen. to heal me. That preacher maybe never know that. Maybe never know that what happened. R.W. Shambaugh, he preached to millions mm. of people over yes, his ministry. Did. Amen. Like and he him. might not never told him, you know, hey, because of your preaching there on that corner and you looked like you were getting rejected and nobody's really paying you no attention. Yeah. And how do you know how many other people might be in the same way? But he come to the Lord on the street corner hearing a preacher preach, acting like he didn't care, he cared less about it. But he went around there and he knelt down and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A lot of times we think we ain't doing nothing, but if we do something, we're doing something. Amen. And we That's never know what the outcome is going to be. Reinhard Bunke, some, <laughs> some of you maybe heard of him, some of you ain't. I mean, had a great one of the greatest ministries in Africa that anybody that's ever had a ministry. Preached to millions in one service. And he did it for years. And he preached in other parts across the world. He said that the, one time his daddy had a little, little storefront, I believe, church. I believe it's what he says, storefront church. Said they had a revival. This guy come preach the revival. Said there wasn't but about 12 people or 20. I might have said 20, but just a handful, just a little bunch of people. And this preacher come and preached that revival. <clears throat> and he said, out of that revival, there was only one person got saved. Hmm. He said, I imagine that preacher went back and said, well, we didn't have too, did too good a results. We only had one person get saved. Praise God. Amen. Where, where do we get in all these numbers? Unless it's big mm -hmm. numbers, they don't count. At that one counts. Jesus went after that one. Yes, he did. That one sheep that wandered away from the fold, the flock. Right. He left the 99 and went to get that one. If one is not important, but you know a lot of people, they think if they can't say big numbers, ain't nothing happening. But right. Jesus was concerned about one. He went after that one that strayed away. Left the 99 there and went after the one. Jesus spoke to the woman at the well. One woman that had a messed up life. Jesus ministered to that one woman. And for us, I think we're more important or some kind of uh, bigger than Jesus. Yes, that counts one person. But Ryan Hart was talking about saying he probably, he might have went back and said, well, we didn't have that good of results. We had one person saved. He said the one person saved was me. Mm. He said I got saved that day. Me, I got saved. And then what happened on down the road? He wound up becoming a minister and preaching to millions of people across Amen. the world and in Africa and other countries. Amen. Yes, that one meant something. You never know who that one's going to be. That one might win their entire family to the Lord Jesus Christ. That one might start a snowball effect. Amen. Let's quit worrying about trying to do some big something. Let's just do something. Let's do something Amen. that God tells us to do. Amen. And leave the results in God. When I come to the Lord, I didn't have one person in my entire family that even went to church that I knew of. We never went to church. 
I think maybe I went twice or something like that when I was a kid. They had an apple bobbing or something. Mm. You know, they have a little something for the kids to come to, and I'd go apple bob or, or get a free hot dog or something like that. But I never was in church. None of my family was. Didn't have an aunt. Didn't have an uncle. Didn't have a grandpa. Didn't have a grandpa. Didn't have a mama. Didn't have a daddy. Didn't have anybody that I knew personally that even attended church. We was not no church people. But you know what? When I can get my life to the Lord, and I went and blinded church of God, and I give my life to the Lord, it wasn't but just a little while after I began to see results. And I remember one time I was sitting there, and uh, God showed me a vision. I seen a lot of my family standing on the bank of a creek. Amen. And I was being baptized. And they were standing there looking at me. And they were smiling. And I thought, Lord, what is this? Later on, he told me in interpretation. He said, if you'll follow me, you'll accept me, you'll follow me. That a lot of them others will be watching you. And they also will follow. Amen. And they did. Amen. And they did. And I remember one time we had a revival right after that. And like I said, one reason I didn't ever give my life to the Lord when I was younger is because I felt like, hey, I ain't got nobody to talk to. I don't know nobody goes to church. Who am I going to talk to? I'm going to be an outcast. Ain't nobody going to fool with me. And it, it hindered me. But we had a revival. Brother Donald Williams from Alabama, he come to our church to preach a revival. We went out and we got our relatives and a whole bunch of them, invited them to come to the revival and went and picked them up and brought them. You know, sometimes we didn't make a little effort. A lot of people don't want to make no effort no more. There, there's people that go pick people up and take them to church, but it's it's a little bit out of the way. It caused them a little bit of problem, amen. But we need to do more than that. And we got a whole, well, we had two pews. You remember that, Linda? During that amen. revival, we filled two pews with people that was not saved, that did not go to church, but because we went and invited them to that revival and picked them up, some of them mm -hmm. away, and brought them to the service and took them back home. We had two, two, what, 10 foot, with the 10 or 12 foot pews. I don't know. 10 foot. They were pretty, maybe 10 foot pews. Two of them filled with people. Amen. And then when the altar call come, started praying, oh, God touched their hearts, touched their hearts. And Amen. just praying, you know, under our breath to herself, not out loud. And they're giving an altar call. Suddenly somebody from one of them pews stood up and started to the altar. I'm telling the truth 100%. No exaggeration. Amen. Then somebody else stood up and started the Amen. altar. For it was over everybody on those two pews that we had brought to church that revival went Amen. to the altar and accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So you don't know what one person is going to be able to influence. Mm -hmm. And then I, a few years ago, I tried to count it up, and I don't know. Maybe I got it wrong. Maybe I, I was close. I think we had 40-something people that got saved, amen, in our family. And some of them became preachers. And some of them become Sunday school teachers. And some of them were, were working in the office, amen, and taking care of the books for the church, amen. People that didn't even go to church, amen. About 40-something of them come to the Lord. So don't think because you can just reach one person, it don't mean nothing. It does mean something. Amen. And that might be the only person you reach in your entire life. But praise God that he can... Maybe they can do something else, and they can do something else, and they can do something else. It can be like a, amen, springboard effect. Right. Like a snowball. So, you know, the Bible says despise not small beginnings. Amen. Despise not small beginnings. Because I'll tell you one thing, you got, everybody got to start somewhere. You got to do something somewhere. I'm saying we're at the end of the age. And yes, what we, we need to do, amen, instead of going off and hiding somewhere, we need to be out more and let our light shine more. We need to be more vocal. We need to lift up Jesus. We need to tell G people that he's our Lord and our Savior. Amen. And what he does for us, he'll do for them. He's no respecter of persons. Amen. Amen. And, and to give people some hope because a lot of people, they think, I can't make it. I can't make it. I, I've, I've done too bad. That's why Jesus died on the cross Amen. for you to make it. He knows you've done bad. That's why he died on the cross. I've seen people and they give up on themselves. Maybe they tried, it didn't work out. A few days later after they made an effort, they got shipwrecked because of whatever reason and they wouldn't try no more. And I talked to them and I, I said, listen, you need to get back in the church. You need to get back, you know, right with the Lord. One guy, he worked with me for many years. He played the guitar. Good singer. Good singer. Could play the guitar. 
I'd get it. He'd get up in front of me. He would do, lead some congregational songs, and they'd sing with him. Then he could do some special songs, and he was a big part of my ministry. And then when he got ready for me to preach, and I would go up and minister. But he got away from God. And I remember one time I was telling him, I said, you need to get back in there, Donnie. You know God's got to work for you. God's got a big work for you. And I said, it won't do me no good. I'll just mess up again. He hadn't given up on God. He gave up on himself. And that's why a lot of people are out there. They haven't given up, give up on God. They still believe Jesus Christ is Lord. You can talk to a lot of people. If they've ever been in church and they've ever drifted away, they still believe in Jesus Christ. But they don't believe that they can make it. They believe this. Uh, maybe they can make it, but I, I don't seem to be able to make it. Yes, you can make it. You just got to get up Amen. and try again. And get up and try Amen. again. Get up. Amen. The Bible says the righteous man can fall seven times, and God is able to bring him back up again and lift him up. Right. said so he's able to restore him. He's able to bring him back up. And you know what? We got a lot of people, and they got this idea that if they mess up, then they got to take and uh, get saved all over again, go through everything. I'm going to tell you something. Once you really got get saved, all you've got to do is ask God to forgive you and be serious about it because you don't have to get saved over and over and over again. If you got saved over and over and over again, you never got saved in the first place. God don't save you on an installment plan. Somebody said, well, I I remember one time in my hometown. I'm going to say it's for the people that's going through this. And I know a lot of people are going through it. They said, well, I was saved one time, but then I, I got went back and got lost again. I'm going to tell you something. You're still the child of God. All you've got to do is ask him to forgive you, tell him you're sorry, and you're going to do your best to do the right thing. And he'll forgive you. Just like in Amen. prodigal son in the Bible, he started back to the father's house to say, hey, Lord, uh, Father, I have sinned against heaven in your sight and all that. Hey, he didn't even have to say that. God knew it was in his heart. And, and the father represented God. Everybody knows that in that parable. The father represented God. Amen. The son represented a backslid or a prodigal or a wayward son. But he, when he come back, the father didn't even make him say all that stuff. He, was, he didn't rehearse what he was going to say, but he started to say it. And the father said, hey, no, go get him some clothes. Somebody said he didn't let him repent. He had done repenting. He know he had done repenting. That's yeah. why he made that yeah. long journey and he'd rehearsed that over in his mind over and over. I'm going to tell him, I'm not worthy to be a son no more. Make me a heart, as one of the hard servants. I'm not worthy to be your son anymore. But he wouldn't even let him get that out because he know he had repented. He knowed his heart. God knows our hearts. We're going to have to quit of being such a religious, I don't know what, what you call that, man. You, you know, everybody got these ideas and stuff like that. But people says they can't make it because they fell, fell. Man, if that be the truth, David couldn't have never made it. If that would be the truth, Peter could have never made it. They failed. Other people that you know in the Bible, they failed. Amen. The Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Yes, amen. Peter even denied the Lord. Not once, three times. Yes, yes. he did. And then backslid went, went back to the fishing ship. But then God restored him. He come back. He's one preaching on the day of Pentecost. Amen. Amen. David done, done probably worse than whoever I might be talking to now. Or maybe might see this. Said, well, I was serving the Lord, and then I got sidetracked, and I got involved in this. He won't forgive me no more. He won't give me. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. That's the devil trying to keep you away from God. Because David done more uh, than probably most anybody's done. He... Man, he was involved in adultery. He was involved in murder. He had this woman's husband killed. That was treachery. He treachery. He done all these things. But if you read the Bible, he repented. Amen. On down the road, read Psalms. David repented and asked God to forgive him. And God forgave murder. And God forgave adultery. Yes, oh, amen. He had to pay a price for it, but God mm -hmm. forgave him. And you know what it said? He said, I found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. That's right. Why would God say that? You Knowing that what David was going to do. Because he repented. People can't comprehend that. He repented. David repented. And when he repented, God forgave him and forgot it. Amen. He said he could not only forgive you, he can forget it. People might have a hard time with it, but God don't. 
And that's why he said, I found David the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Was he a man after his own heart because he would do some of the bad things he'd done? He, he numbered Israel, and it caused a lot of people to die. God was angry with David because he numbered Israel, and there was a lot of people died because of what David done. And then we know about the story about David and Bathsheba. We know, know that that was adultery. We know all that. Then we know how he tried to cover it over by having her husband killed. And they, they took this poor man and put him out there in the heat of the battle. And then David said, withdraw yourself from mm -hmm. him. Withdraw yourself from him. Put him Amen. out there. And then get away from him. Let him be killed. Amen. That is pretty treacherous. Now, that ain't what God was commenting on saying he's a man after my own heart because he's going to do all that stuff. What he was commenting on, he repented. Yeah. By, down the road, he said, God, I'm sorry. My iniquity is ever before me. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. God, I'm sorry. I was conceived in iniquity. I mean, you can read the Psalms and you can see him over and over. God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And you know what? God forgave him. Yes, and when amen. God forgave him, he forgot it. And that's why he could say he's a man after my own heart. That's right. Not that he ain't never done nothing wrong. These people out there don't think they ever do nothing wrong. They probably do more wrong than anybody else is. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. They just don't think they can do no wrong. You know, it's all they're looking at this one, they're looking at that one. Any time that you're sitting in church and rattling against somebody and putting somebody down and gossiping and trying to tear things down, you're doing more wrong than the people sitting in the bars. Amen. Because look, you know, they just bar it by themselves. Amen. Amen. But you're tearing down everything that God's trying to do. And you know what? There's a lot that goes on in church houses. They get mad at the preacher. They get mad at the mm -hmm. deacon. They get mad at somebody else in the congregation. Don't agree with something they do. Whatever. And then they just continually, continually tear down and try to get other people on their side to their point of view. Next thing you know, you got a mess. Next thing you know, you got a church split. But they don't think they're doing no wrong. But you know, mm -hmm. if they can really see their stuff, they're doing an awful lot of wrong. Amen? Amen. I've had people, they ain't here no more, I'm not going to call no names. I had people that falsely accused me, falsely accused me of things I didn't even do, and I had a whole lot of people know it, amen, but they didn't know it. They would not tell them, and they wouldn't even accept it. They wouldn't even believe it, and they called people on the phone, and they tried mm -hmm. to take and tear me down, and they tried to tear me down, and they tried to tear me down, but you know what? I'm still going. Amen. Praise God, I'm standing yep. here. I'm <laughs> sitting here. I ain't standing. I'm here. I'm here. They ain't here no more. That's right. That ought to tell you something. Amen. Mm -hmm. But it's a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous thing. But it wasn't, it wasn't just good enough. They'll get mad at you. They want to call on the phone and turn yeah. out and try and get this one against you, that and this one against you. And then next thing you'll got church split and everybody's against everybody. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody say, well, uh, this is uh, Christianity. It shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't. No, it shouldn't. We're supposed to love one another. Amen. 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 We're supposed to help one another. We're supposed to uh, try to have unity, not division. That's right. It ain't, it ain't Christianity when people does that. Remember a story one time. I don't know how I got in all this. I, I started trying to tell you that, that we're in that generation. I guess if we're in that generation, we need to straighten up. If we're in that generation, we need to be about the Father's business. If this thing is about to wind up, we ain't got no time to play no, no more. Amen. We ain't got no time to coast no more. We got to do what God tells us to do now, and we got to do it quickly. Amen. Uh, amen. But I remember, and this, this has happened. This has happened. If you, most of the denominations you see today, they split it from other denominations. Mm -hmm. It's the truth. Read, read history. The Church of God of Prophecy come forth uh, from the Church of God. Uh, Church mm -hmm. of God, the one, the Church of God come forth from the Assemblies of God. And the uh, mm -hmm. Assemblies of God come, come forth, the United Pentecostal come forth, the uh, uh, Church of God of Prophecy come forth, the Church of God. Mm -hmm. They split, and they start, kept splitting, and they started getting their own denominations. And if you'll read most of it, that's where most of them come from. Sure. Splitting, splitting, going down the road. And sometimes it was something major, and a lot of times it was nothing. Just a little something that just wasn't all that important. I remember one time I heard this story about the chicken church and the fish church. Oh, amen. And it sounds so petty and pathetic, but it was the truth. It was actually the truth that happened. They are going to have a homecoming. They said, well, what are we going to serve the people? You know, mm -hmm. we're going to serve them uh, chicken. Some said, oh, we'd, I'd like to have fish. One said, no, chicken, you know. I always preferred chicken myself. But 
Anyway, they they got an argument. Some of them want to have fish. Some want to have chicken. Mm. They got an argument. It's it, it got out of hand. Next thing you know, they had this big fuss going on. And part of the church left, Lord and part of the church mercy. stayed, and the ones that left went down the road of uh, just just on the same road down there, not not real far, and built another church. Mm-hmm. And you got the people that knows the history of what happened, the reason they split, and this church here, that church down the road there, they'll say that's the chicken church and that's the fish church. <laughs> now, what does that look like to people? Terrible. What does that look like, the lost people? What does that look like, the people that you're trying to lead to the Lord? Amen. Yes, people, they do some pretty silly things. But that ain't Jesus. No. Jesus would never tell them to do something like that. Mm-mm. Amen. He would say, stick together. Love your brother. Amen. Amen. Forgive your brother. Amen. If you think you got anything to forgive, that, that shouldn't be nothing to forgive. Because you get a little fuss about where you're going to have chicken or yeah. fish. Have <laughs> both. Linda would rather have a fish, had not Huh? You chicken. You don't like none of them. You want steak? What do you want? <laughs> you better wake up or I can wake you up. That's sweet. <laughs> it's like just resting your eyes. I mean, some things are serious. I understand that. They can get in a problem in the building in a, a group of people, and some things be real serious. We ain't got no choice but to do that. But some things don't mean nothing. And we don't need to let these things escalate. We don't need, we need to take it, take care of them quick. We are in the end of time as we know it. I don't think this generation will be no longer than I'm here. I believe I, I was 48 when I was born and 48, I believe that was again the last generation. This is the way I feel about it. As long as I'm here, that will be that generation. Mm-hmm. When I die, it will be the end of that generation. Unless there's some other, they probably somebody was born 48, they might live longer than me. But whoever, what I'm saying is we ain't got much time. Mm-hmm. I'm 73 year old. And what we're going to have to do right now is be about our father's business. Amen. And let me tell you something. You can touch more people. You can touch more people than you realize. One at a time. One at a time. Mm-hmm. I remember one time that we, uh, I, I give a tape to this lady. And don't think what you're doing is important because if God leads you to do it, it's important. I gave a tape called God Will Burn Your Barley Fields. I remember that one. And I gave that tape to Sister Carolyn Sales. She took the tape and gave it to a family that wasn't Christian. And somehow or another, they actually listened to it. Most most people in Christian wouldn't listen to it, I'll be honest with you. But they did. And that entire family got saved. Wow. Amen. Two or three weeks after I gave it to her, she wrote me a letter and said, Brother Ray, the entire family give their life to the Lord. Mm. And I just gave her one tape. And she gave it to a family. And that family got saved. And ha- who knows what happened after that. Amen. Some of those family members probably had some friends. Some of those family members had some acquaintances. So who knows? So let's quit looking at the big deals that we think something is a big deal and let's just do what God tells us to do. Despise not small beginnings. We sit around here. We got what about five here today? But praise God. Jesus said two or three. We're two or three is gathered together. Amen. He'll be in the midst of us. You believe he meant what he said? Amen. See, that means something to him. Two or three. Yes. And why did he say that? Because he knew there'd be times it wouldn't be but two or three. He knows there'd be times there might not be but two. He knows there'd be times it wouldn't be a large number. But he said, I'm still going to be in the midst of them. And if the Lord can make an appearance and his spirit can be in the midst of two or three, we certainly can. Amen? Amen. I was complaining. I'm going to leave with this if I can. I was complaining one time. I said, Lord, we need more people. <laughs> mm. And kind of complained. I said, Lord, we need some more people. He said, did you ever read in the Bible where anytime two or three is gathered together in my name, I'll be in the midst of them? Amen. I said, yeah, I read that. He said, you think you're more important than me? Mm. I said, no. He said, if I can show up for two or three, you certainly can. I think think we probably had about 15 or 20. We had a crowd compared to two or three. But, But that's what he said. If I can show up for two or three, you certainly can. Mm. I heard a preacher say one time, and uh, 
He had had evangelists come to preach. And the preacher got saved. He was a little country church. wasn't no big church. And he got up, and he was so full of himself. There may have been 20, 25 people in the congregation. And he stood up, and he said, is this, this is all it's going to be here, all I can preach to? He said, I've got to have more people this preach to. Oh, wow. And he had like it was an awful thing. And uh, I told him, I said, well, you might as well leave then. Because most of the country church ain't got but 20, 25 people. Right. But he was so full of himself, he didn't think, he thought he was above preaching that small crowd, what he considered a small crowd. But no, if Jesus can minister to one person, you can minister to one person. Amen. 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 And, if we, and if we're so puffed up in ourselves, we think we can't, then we got a serious problem, amen. That's right. Yes. Because he's concerned the one. He's concerned with the two. He's concerned with the three. He's concerned with the multitudes. Amen. But if you ever read in the Bible where the multitudes were, they found out pretty quick. Right. Mm -hmm. Until after the day of Pentecost. When he had the 5,000, I was trying to close this out. When he had the 5,000, because, because sometimes we, the devil will make us think we ain't doing nothing. The devil will make us think, you know, uh, look at this one over here. They got hundreds, or they got all this, and we're just a little small group. We ain't doing nothing. If we was right, we'd be, we'd have crowds like that. No, it ain't necessarily true all the time. Amen. Amen. It ain't necessarily true all the time. But what we got to do is just be faithful to the place that God puts us, and God can multiply it if He chooses to do that. Amen. And that's, that's, I guess that's my message. We're at the our end, and what we do. There's no little missions from God. If God gives you a mission, it's not a little mission. It's a big mission. Yes, amen. You amen. might not accomplish as much as somebody else might think you ought to accomplish, but see, it ain't over yet. You don't know what's going to happen down the road. That's right. You don't know what's going to happen. We went to Africa. I went to Africa. I didn't know what was going to happen. I mean, I'd, I'd never been there before. I went by myself. I just put my hand, myself in the hands of God. But God started the snowball effect there in Africa. And I got up there, and I thought I was going to go to the slum in Nairobi, the little church in the slum. I was going to go there and preach a few services, and that's what I thought I was going to do. But when I got there, four or five ministers come to me where I was staying in the guest house, and they said, you mind going to the upcountry? I said, well, I wasn't planning on it. I said, but y'all know what needs to be done. This is your country. You know what needs to be done where we can be most effective. And I, they said, we think you can do better in the upcountry. They had a little church up there. We went up there, and we had all-day services for uh, three days. And more started more 10 o'clock in the morning. It didn't end after dark all day long for three mm -hmm. days. We done more preaching three days than most people does in a month. <laughs> but the thing about it, I'm going to show you this one. It's just a little village called the Cumber Tribe, a little old church there. They had four uh, about 40 people could fit in it. Some other people were staying outside. But then when it started to open air at 2 o'clock, then a whole lot more come because the open air is out there where they could just stand and settle Amen. things. All that stuff. But the thing about it, when we went in there, I didn't know what was going to happen. But a few days later, after I, well, we had 40-something people come to the Lord, which was pretty good right there in that area, just on the spur of the moment. Wasn't no big publicity, wasn't nothing. And we had 40-something. But a few days later, they were sending you a letter, and they said, you know what? We went down there and dammed up that little spring. They didn't hardly have no water up there. It was a drought. And there was a little old stream, and they dammed it up. They dug it out big. It probably wasn't much bigger than somebody, somebody's bathtub. It was big enough for you to stick them under, but it wasn't very big at all. And they went down there. Now, this is what happened. I went in there, and I ministered. Just didn't know what God was going to do, really. Forty people went down there and was baptized mm -hmm. in a little water hole. And they said that most of them, when they come up out of the water, they were filled with the Spirit. Amen. Most Amen. of them. But it didn't stop there. From that little church there, that one little building there, it sprung. And Brother Titus ended up establishing 17 churches what? in that vicinity. Amen. And I don't know how many he's got now. That's the last count I had. He had 17 in that vicinity. And it sprung from that little thing. And it might not appear to be much happening if you just, you know, for these great big crusades. You know, we talk about these big stadiums. You know, people feel some big stadiums. they got all these thousands. And we don't think, well, that's pretty big, but that wasn't much happening. But do you know what? God supernaturally, and I know I got to end this. I'm trying to say, don't worry about it if it seems small, and even in your eyes or somebody else's eyes. It ain't small. 
God has got a mission. Amen. It's no small missions. If he's wanting you to do something, he knows what's going to happen down the road. Just obey God. That's right. Obey God. Let's get the work done. But thank you stuck out to me. Me and Thomas, as we walked, had to walk seven miles back to where we was going to sleep at night. We'd leave about dusk, and we'd walk and there, and we'd seven miles, and walk seven miles back the next morning for services. And I thank God I was a whole lot better conditioned in. Hmm. But the thing about it is, Brother Thomas was talking to his mama. As we was coming back one morning and, and talking about service, he said, yeah, I could hear. She said, he said, you could hear the service? She said, yeah, I could hear it very plainly. Seven miles away, she could hear the service. She said, I could hear about everything that was said. Seven miles away. Now, whether that because it was flat land through there and the sound traveled and, and, and then, it, then it dropped off and maybe naturally, maybe that's what the reason. Maybe it was supernaturally. But what I'm saying, seven miles, people mm -hmm. could hear those services and hear the preaching of the word mm -hmm. and hear the prayers. There ain't no stadium that big in the world. Mm -hmm. There ain't no stadium seven miles mm -hmm. long. Um, so actually we preached in the biggest stadium in the world we was preaching mm -hmm. seven miles to all them villages and all them people through there amen, amen. Never know. supernaturally or naturally or whatever yes, amen. God done it Amen. and the church was still growing on and last time I there were 17 churches established from that one and it was still growing and I thank God despite 